Hello everyone, hope you're having the most awesome day today. Welcome to the Film Insight channel. For today's video, we're going to discuss some more of the worst restaurants featured on Kitchen Nightmares and reveal how they're doing now. So, sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get right into the content, guys. Bazzini For a season 3 episode, Gordon Ramsay heads over to Bazzini in Ridgeway, New Jersey to rescue it from closure. Owned by Paul and Leslie Bazzini, they've been running the place for over 5 years, but things have been pretty rough. Due to the pressures that come with owning a restaurant, Paul gets frustrated very easily and tends to yell at the staff. What's more, he's extremely self-righteous and doesn't like listening to anyone's suggestions, which makes things very difficult. His wife Leslie expressed that she no longer has a college fund for her children and is concerned that they won't even be able to pay for their bills, so they call out to Ramsey for some help. Upon his eventual arrival, he notices that the doors are locked and that the restaurant is closed since the place only opens in the evening. Soon after though, Paul shows him around and Ramsey notices that the restaurant is quite narrow and that the decor is awful. Asking the owner to cook him something special rather than look at the menu, he brings back some fettuccine which is cold and tasteless. The head waiter exposes the owner by saying that he brushes off any criticism that customers make about his food since they're supposedly unimportant. Getting to try out more of the dishes, Ramsey is disgusted by how awful they are but surprisingly loves his cheesecake and carrot cake dessert. Made by Sharon, the pastry chef, the Kitchen Nightmares host praises her for making it with love and passion. Watching the dinner service later on, Ramsey's revealed that their crab cakes are reheated after being prepared the day before and a customer sends theirs back since it was burnt. To make matters worse, customers have to wait over an hour to get their meals, so the famous chef decides to shut things down out of frustration. Pulling the owners aside, Ramsey comes to understand that Paul has lost his passion for cooking and is ashamed of the state of the restaurant. Hoping to reignite his drive to cook, Ramsey challenges Paul to make a homemade pasta dish in 15 minutes and he successfully makes something really good. Reopening the restaurant for a simple two-course lunch, the Kitchen Nightmares host and the owner joined forces to make fresh pasta that was a hit with the customers. Receiving tons of positive feedback, with many saying that it was the best pasta they've ever had, Paul was filled to the brim with excitement. Ready to make some renovations, Ramsey and his team work overnight to give the restaurant a modern contemporary theme. When it's finally revealed to the owners, they're stunned with how dramatic things changed but are extremely pleased nonetheless. Post Kitchen Nightmares, the business got a major boost in sales and was doing pretty decent for a while. Though their pastry chef decided to move on to bigger things and opened their own dessert business called Simply Homemade Desserts. Ramsey decided to return for a revisited episode a while later but was met with a dark and abandoned restaurant since it was closed down permanently. Officially closing down in June of 2010, Paul moved on to working at another restaurant called Hearth and Tap Co. as a chef alongside his son Andrew. Working there to this day, the restaurant's doing pretty well with a solid 4 out of 5 review on TripAdvisor. We're glad that he's at least found success elsewhere. Hot Potato Cafe In another Season 3 episode, Gordon Ramsay pays a visit to the failing Hot Potato Cafe to bring it back on its feet. Owned by three sisters named Claire, Catherine, and Erin, they decided to open up a restaurant on a whim, thinking it would be a fun experience. Instead of trying to focus on the food, they decided it would be best to put emphasis on the building's decor, which was a mistake. It's for this very reason that when a food critic decided to visit the restaurant, they dubbed the place as Spuddy Hell and it pushed a lot of customers away. Considering the fact that none of them have any experience in the industry and are in a deep pool of debt, they called out to Ramsey for some aid. When he finally arrives, he meets with the owners who are completely clueless about the business's issues. Taking a look at the menu, the famous chef asks them to recommend something to him and none of them choose a potato dish despite it being a potato themed restaurant. Deciding on getting a hot potato soup, spud skins, and a shepherd's pie, they all come back tasting dreadful. Heading into the kitchen to confront the cook, he meets with Danielle who's never had any formal training and simply follows the recipe she's given. Later on, Ramsey tries to find out for himself where the restaurant is going wrong and observes the dinner service which was a disaster. Not only was it very chaotic in the kitchen, but there wasn't any leadership, the staff was confused about the orders, and a lot of the dishes were being sent back for tasting bad. Holding a staff meeting after this sad display, Ramsey tells them that they don't have any passion and decides to leave since he can't do anything to help. Running after the famous chef, they tell him that they're out of options and are willing to do whatever to revive the restaurant, which moves Ramsey enough to continue. Following this, Ramsey challenges the cooks to create fillings for fresh hot potatoes, giving the winner a spot on the menu. Out of everyone, Danielle's dish was deemed to be the best and as a reward, Ramsey teaches her how to make a delicious shepherd's pie, which would be their special for the next service. Customers seemed to love the new menu items, but the portion sizes were way too big, which resulted in a lot of customers requesting to take the leftovers home. To put things into perspective, Ramsey brings in around 50 boxes after the service to symbolize the amount of food the patrons took home with them, which reduces their profits. Highlighting the fact that their food costs would be much lower if they simply reduced the portion sizes, they agree and Ramsey is finally ready to move into the renovations. Starting with giving the restaurant a new sign outside that was more visible, he also modernized the interior and made it seem more elegant as well as added a lounge area. Alongside updating the menu to include dishes that everyone would love, Ramsey managed to secure a 3 month supply of fresh potatoes for free from the Idaho Potato Commission. 
As a final surprise, the famous chef invites the same critic that ruined their reputation to give them a second chance. Aside from the patrons absolutely adoring the food, the critic branded his meal as potato-rific, solidifying the fact that the restaurant has grown. Post-Kitchen Nightmares, Ramsey helped Hot Potato Cafe market the restaurant on TV and on the streets. For a while, they were getting fantastic reviews, but once Danielle left the restaurant, their standards dropped significantly. From this point on, the reviews on Yelp were very mixed, with some praising the service quality and others saying that the food was a hit or miss. The restaurant was officially closed down in August of 2010 after being put up for sale two months prior, and in its place, a business called Lloyd Whiskey Bar opened up, which has good reviews. Rather than continue in the restaurant industry, Danielle trained to become a nurse and is currently working part-time as both a nurse and a bartender. Are you surprised that it closed down? Let us know in the comments down below. Anna Vincenzo's As our final entry, we're going to discuss a restaurant that Gordon Ramsay attempted to save called Anna Vincenzo's. Opened in 2001 with the help of her father, owner Cece decided that she wanted to follow in her dad's footsteps and open an Italian restaurant of her own. In the beginning, the business was booming and they were making tons in profit, though it declined over time. Due to this, Cece lost most of her interest and passion in the restaurant and barely cares about what's going on in the kitchen. Being close to $200,000 in debt and on the verge of losing her house, the owner called out to Ramsey for his professional guidance. Upon his eventual arrival, Ramsey meets with the owner and points out that the decor is actually pretty impressive. Ordering one of everything from the menu, Cece expresses that it would be way too much to cook in one sitting, and the famous chef says that he only asked because he wanted to prove a point. Scanning the humongous menu, Ramsey decides to order three different dishes which were all either dry, overcooked, or really soggy, leaving him feeling disappointed. Frustrated that the famous chef was sending back her dishes, the owner asks her server to tell Ramsey that people are starving and that she won't serve him any longer if he keeps wasting her food. In response, the Kitchen Nightmares host tells his waiter that Cece should voice her complaints in person after she's done in the kitchen, which infuriates her. Soon after that, she comes out and tells Ramsey that she wants to rip his head off since he's British and doesn't know anything about Italian food. Following his awful lunch, Ramsey gives the owner some feedback, but she's nothing but defensive about his criticisms. Getting into a heated shouting match, Ramsey decides to leave, but returns the following day when things are calmer to observe the dinner service. Starting with inspecting the kitchen, he notices that most of their food is frozen, so it's sent out rather quickly, but comes back just as swiftly. One of the customers didn't like their veal because it was void of any flavor, and another complained about having cold calamari, which angered Cece beyond belief. She was so salty that she refused to make anything else and forced the staff to tell the customers to leave, which must have been so embarrassing. Returning the next day, the Kitchen Nightmares host points out that the menu is way too big, which has a negative impact on the kitchen. Breaking down, the owner admits that she's scared of failure, which prompts Ramsey to tell her that it'll become a reality if she does nothing about her food. Working alongside Cece to reduce the menu size, they introduce a family-style lasagna and a new soup to the menu. Thanks to the owner's willingness to change, Ramsey was finally ready to make the necessary renovations. Post-Kitchen Nightmare, Cece followed Ramsey's advice for a while, but she eventually went back to her old ways, which is why it closed down in April of 2010. Supposedly, the owner expressed that she wanted to focus on her family and mental health, so she decided to move on. Well, that'll be all for today's video here on the channel. I do hope you enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more content like this and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. Have a good one, guys.